Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ibrahim Adedeji, and I'll be taking us through the web design workshop. Um, basically, to start off, start off, what the, thing, the tools we'll be needing are the tools that, are, that have always been available on our PC. We're using our notepad and we're using your favorite browser, Google Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, whichever browser is your favorite. So first of all, I'll be explaining the basis of um, web, basically the basis of the web, the uh, website, how it all works, before we move on to um, overview of the course content. So I want you to notepad now. Yes. So um. So, um, how the web works is how we want to start. So, what happens when you open your address bar and enter an address, say google.com? Oh, um, I demonstrate that now. So, when you open your address bar and type google.com. What really goes on behind behind the scenes? How does how do we get to um how do we get to see uh, the Google web page on typing this? Now that is how it works. So um the website basically is um when you open Google.com and you see a web page. What happens is that your browser sends a request to a computer somewhere and that computer somewhere returns a response. The response is the web page you see. Now, how, how does your browser know how, um, the way it's supposed to send the request and how does the computer know this is what it's supposed to return? Now, the website is basically files, a series of files put on, um, hosted on a server, a computer basically. So this is of files are hosted on the server and they are programmed in such a way that if, if this all is visited, that means a request is sent, um, it should return this file, this HTML file, this CSS file, this, it should return this web page whenever anyone, a browser requests for this all. So when you type google.com in your address bar, for example, what happens is that now um, there's something called um, the DNS, the domain name server. So see the DNS as an address book, basically. Um, and I just that has people's name and um, their phone numbers, their people's name and their address. Now, in this case, this um, this DNS seen as an address book is uh, a list of domain names with that which, for example, Google.com, Yahoo.com, Facebook.com. That's the domain name. So a list of um, this. Um, these domain names and their respective IP addresses. These IP addresses are like the phone numbers or the house address that, that tells um, the browser where which server is hosting the necessary files for this um, for this website. So when your browser does a DNS lookup, when you enter Google.com, your browser does a DNS lookup, fetches the IP address of um, the respective website, returns it, and then goes goes to find that IP address and fetch what is necessary. Now, how does the, the server, on, on top of the um, website as we said, how does it know what to return? That's where web designers and web developers generally come in. It is what you design, it is what you build that you put on the server with the correct configuration that gets it done. That gets it done. Now, to design a website, basically, to design a website, there are three basic structures of designing the website to what you see. What you see is three basic structures. So I uh, highlight them and this there's HTML, there's CSS, there's Java. So what's HTML, what's CSS, what is JavaScript? HTML is hypertext markup language and I will be explaining this using the balance of the human body. What HTML is to web pages is the same thing is what the skeleton is to the human body. So HTML is like the skeleton, CSS is cascading style sheets, which is like the skin, the makeup, everything. JavaScript is the behavior. 
like how how um, how how do we how does the web page behave in appearance if this happens what are, what uh, what's supposed to happen so put in context um, look at your Facebook page for example what you have is um, you, are, you are you are scrolling through a set of Facebook pictures uh, Facebook um, you are scrolling through your Facebook feed you are seeing pictures you are seeing posts so what HTML how HTML comes into play there is it's is the structure that holds the image, the structure that holds the title, the structure that holds the paragraph, and everything you see. Now, CSS is how those things are given color, they are given space, they are given the font type, they are given everything to make it look beautiful. Now, if you click, if you click your like button, for example, what happens when you click your like button? The like button changes color from green to blue. Now, that 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 is done with JavaScript. So. Basically, that's what each and every one of them does. Now, when you click the like button, the number of likes increases. The number of likes for this, uh, for your, for that post, you click on increases. How does that happen? Because when you click the like button, a request is sent to, to a server, it processes it and adds the number of likes. And when that's successful, it um, it updates your feed that the number of like, uh, likes has increased. So, how that is done? There are many. The HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the front end of the web. Now, now on the back end, we can have PHP and SQL. So PHP, see the PHP as the reasoning language of um, of the back end of the server. Now, um, you can you can instead of PHP, you can use Python. You can use um, JavaScript, Node.js of JavaScript. You can use Go, Go. You can use various languages on the back end. Now, what this SQL does is it's like the language of the memory. It's how you interact with the database. The database being the table storing data. It's where you store your username, it's where you store your password and code. So that's what each and every one of them does. So um, there are different ways to design a website, of course. There is um, there is using the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and there is using there is the way you can use the no code way. That means through the use of um, central content management systems and page builders. Now it might have been a bit easier if we go to if we go the way of content management systems. This is what works, but the setup uh, might not be readily available. Trying to set things up, uh, getting a live server or using your local server using Champ, it might not be readily available. So I thought we should just um, go the code way and. Okay, so if you just um, go the code way, since we all have notepad, we all have browsers, so that's basically um, how it goes. So over the course of this course, um, we we'll go through the basic, the core basis of HTML. We we'll go through everything you need um, to use it to use HTML, everything you need to know about HTML and how to effectively use them for web pages. We we'll go through um, CSS, cascading style sheet how to start your web pages and how to design them. By the end of the, this course, you'll be able to uh, design you'll be able to design web pages. At least basically you'll be able to design web pages and you'll be well grounded to proceed to consulting other learning materials. There are tons of learning platforms, there are tons of learning materials online. If you are the video type, there, is, there are tons of YouTube videos. If you are the text type, there are tons of ebooks, there are a lot of a whole lot of blogs, which I'll be sharing. Now at the end of the course, this course should you be willing to learn uh, to proceed to learn for that? There is W3 school. There is solo learn. Ah. There is free code camp. And among among others. So um depends on how fast you want to go. This solo learn app is available for for your iphone and for your android um you you everything you need to learn is there so um it seems to be a little bit summary uh, compared to this other to this um w3 schools free code camp they are quite robust which is good for you but for someone just starting off and you want to get going quickly you might you can i would recommend you start with solo learn then when you are done when you are done with solo learn when you are when you are actually building things, then you can produce see to learn more from W3 schools from Free Code Camp. So that's the way it is. So now, um, today is meant to be introduction class, but well, we might as well get our hands um, into doing things. So HTML, what is uh, what's HTML supposed to be? What's HTML? I do, I informed us the HTML is, is the structure of the web page. 
So HTML serves as the structure of the web page. It helps we use HTML to define the structure of our web page. How it's, how it's meant to look. Now let's let's get our first HTML page. Now it's quite simple. Here's our notepad. If you type anything in your notepad, anything at all. Then file, you go to file, you save us. So now here is where we get to save our file. So you give it the name of your choice, page, page. Now instead of saving that dot txt, use page dot html, and that's how you save um, a web page. So page.html, it will, it will tell our PC this is an HTML file and it, so you will be able to open it with Chrome with any browser of your choice. Now I will be saving this on the desktop. Saved. Now this is our HTML page. Um, I want to add the desktop window now. One moment please. Let's just um, let's just skip this. Now, I have saved our HTML page. I save it on desktop. Now, all you have to do now is find that, uh, find where you saved your HTML page. That page.html. Open it. You can double click on it, or you depending on what you have as the default opener of HTML website. Let, to not get too complicated, we'll get to that. We, we might get to that shortly. But find where you save the HTML page. Right click on it. Right click on it. Go to open with. Choose your favorite browser and you'll be good to go. Now, look at what we have on our, our HTML page. Remember, it's the same thing we type in our notepad. So, Let's recap how we, how we got this done. We got this done by, uh, we typed everything in our notepad. We went to file, we went to save us, and we saved it at name.page.html. Now, the important part is the extension, which is the dot, dot .html. So, if save with dot .html, our uh, browser will be able to recognize it as an HTML file. Now, this that we did is just to get things started and get them done. This is not how to write an HTML page. So, there are semantics to follow, which is where we'll start. We start an HTML page. That is that. Now we start with the HTML tag. Now in HTML there are elements and there are tags. To start an HTML document, uh, we start with the HTML tag. We open an HTML tag, then we close the HTML tag. Now anything we want to we want to be in our HTML page will be in between this uh, this open and close HTML tag. So um, these are HTML page. Uh, whatever content you type um, uh, in between these two tags, in between this tag, you get this page on our page. In fact, whatever content you type anywhere on this page, on this notes, we will get displayed on our page. But they are to have a, a valid structure because our, our the size of our page is very small. This um, typing the way we started the other time might be you know we might see it as minimum. But when you are actually building something, you are actually building something. The, the effect of this structure will actually materialize. So this is the basic. Uh, this uh, this is how we start off an HTML page in an HTML document. So the next thing is that now notice the indentation. In HTML, we use this indentation to to showcase parent-child elements. Now the HTML. 
Yeah, the HTML, uh, the open, the HTML is the print element, the head is the child element. Yeah. Now, next thing after this, we go back to the head. Show me. Yeah, the body. Now, the head, what does the head do? What does the body do? The head um, is where we put properties of the web pages and resources. The web pages need to function the way it has to function. It's where to, we put um, the title for the web page, what we want, to, the name we want to be displayed on tabs. Uh, it's where we put links to CSS, links to JavaScript, links to files the web page needs to function. But not to get this complicated, we we'll start off with the title. Now, inside this body, let's, let's put something. DDD. So, um, if we go back to our HTML page, now, after, after typing in content, we save Ctrl S, then we go back to our HTML, to our Chrome, Google Chrome, we reload F5. Now, we have our JJJ display. Um, so, inside this set, now, if you notice something, you know, uh, notice uh, from our Google Chrome, So from our Google Chrome, uh, we change the content of our notepad and we have this displayed. I'm not sure if this has displayed. So let me. So this this is the uh, this is currently the content of our notepad. We have the head, the body, and in between we have a random JJ type. And checking our uh, checking our Google Chrome, here's what we have now. Checking our Google Chrome as well, we have JDJ is displayed. Now, if you look at the tab here, it displays page.html, which is the name of our file. What if we want something else displayed here? We execute that using the title. Now, inside our head, we'll create the title tag. Inside this title, my web. We save. We go to our Google Chrome. Now we use F5 to reload. Now you can see the title of our the title of our tab has changed. So that's what the title does. Today is meant to be, all, be um, the introductory, the general overview class. I just thought of um, getting us started on, on, on HTML. Tomorrow we'll, we'll go into full depth with HTML and we'll create all some, all some things. Um, thanks, for coming, uh, thanks for coming to this class. Um, if you have any questions, um, the, president will, the president will share my, my contact. I'll be available to uh, entertain questions. Thanks for coming to the class.